Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss regulation SX of the SEC Securities and Exchange Commission. This regulation dictates the form and content of financial reports of publicly traded companies. And what are those two most important financial reports? Those are the interim financial statements, the quarterly ones, the 10 Qs, as well as the annual financial statement, the 10 K. Now, why does this regulation exist? It's to make sure we have uniformity. When company report, they use the 10 K report. We know what a 10 K look, looks like for all companies, whether it's in the financial industry, software industry, retail industry, they all follow the same format. Same thing with the quarterly financial statements. Also, you have to understand S SX is different than SK. SK also is an SEC regulation that deals with qualitative description. So SX deals with financial reporting numbers. You're going to see SK when we cover SK, it's qualitative description. The reason I'm mentioning this, because you could have a multiple choice question that's testing you whether you know the difference between SX versus SK regulation of the SEC. It also cover the annual report and financial statement, but from a qualitative perspective. Let's discuss regulation SX a little bit further. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with interim financial statements. When we say interim, it means less than one full year. That year could be a calendar year or that year could be a physical year. It doesn't really matter, but it's less than a year. Interim financial statements are subject to review, not audit. You have to be careful. And what does a review involve? We'll talk about review later. Review involve analytical procedures and inquiry just to make sure they are kind of accurate. We're not going a full-blown audit for the quarterly. The balance sheet should reflect the most recent physical quarter because it's quarterly and the end of the preceding physical year. And we're going to see an example uh, for how this, the, how this information is presented. However, the prior year balance sheet is not mandatory. You don't have to show the full prior year unless you think it's necessary to understand seasonal fluctuation. If you think the balance sheet is necessary because the quarterly, let's assume a business is a seasonal business, and in this quarter, they're not doing very well. But if you look at their full last year, the picture would look different. So if you want to show the full year because they have a seasonal business to kind of Tell the users, look, don't, don't don't read too much into this quarter. If you look at last year, everything is averaging out. That's fine, but you don't have to. Also, for the income statement, for the interim financial statements, you would also report the most recent fiscal quarter and the period between the end of the preceding fiscal year and the current quarter. And we'll see how it works. Also, reporting the 12-month cumulative is permissible, again, if you would like to. Same concept applies to the statement of cash flows. The best way to illustrate this is to look at an actual report. We're going to look at Amazon. The first thing I want you to notice, those are unaudited, unaudited financial statements. And notice it's the three month ended, three month ended September 30th. This is quarterly and this is the most recent, 2023. We have sales of 143 billion. Then we have comparison last year the quarter of last year so notice the three month ended september 30th 2022 sales was 127 billion now is 2023 143 billion then what they also shown us is the nine month ended so this is from january 1st to september 30th so far the revenue is 404 billion of which 143 billion from this recent quarter and they show us the same thing for the September 22nd. So they're showing us as of the beginning of the fiscal year and the quarterly by itself. 
can we show the annual yes if you want to show the annual of the prior 12 month you can if you feel that's necessary adjustments how about adjustments well first of all interim financial statements can be presented in a condensed version but however they have to include any necessary adjustment to make sure the numbers are correct and this should be clearly mentioned in the accompanying notes that they are condensed and any necessary adjustment is there if adjustments are typically reoccurring like we have certain adjustments for salaries for bonuses we have to mention that also the financial statements must provide a thorough explanation regarding the nature magnitude of any adjustment that deviate from normal reoccurring pattern so if we have any unusual adjustment guess what explain it if it's routine usual it doesn't need explanation like salaries adjusting the salaries at the end of the year but if there's something else we need to know it Disclosure requirement for interim financial statement, you can exclude elements that are available in the most annual financial statement. The assumption is this, you're looking at this quarterly financial statement, but you do have access to the annual financial statements, so we're not going to disclose everything. For example, significant accounting policies, you have access to it from the annual report, details of account that remain largely unchanged, we don't have to disclose this. Uh, any comprehensive annual disclosure outline that's fine and the reason why this is permissible because you have access the assumption is you have access to the latest annual report therefore we don't need to repeat ourselves however there are certain required disclosure significant events occurring after the last fiscal year that materially affect the entity so if something happened since the last of since the last fiscal period then it's not included in the prior annual report and this might include what for example if you have a change in your accounting principles or method you have to show why the rationale and disclose it any major revision and estimate any shift in the status of long-term contract if you obtain a new financing loan that issued new debt if you experience any significant uh, merger or divestiture those are required disclosure in the quarterly financial statements let's move on now to the annual report 10k First, the 10K has to be audited in contrast to the quarterly, which only have to be reviewed. What do you have to include? Do you have to know this information? You have to include the most recent two physical years for the balance sheet, audited ones. Income statement, three. So notice, balance sheet, two. Income statement, three. Statement of cash flows, three. So you have to know this, leading up to the date of the most recent audited balance sheet. Also, statement detailing changes in owner's equity for each of the three fiscal year before the end of the most current balance sheet. What type of disclosure do we need for the 10K? It's, the list is long. I'm going to show it to you. Practically everything and anything get disclosed there. You can take a look at this list, and that's not a comprehensive list. Let's take a look at an MCQ from Farhat Lectures. That could be testing this concept, regulation S what is included so what period do the balance sheet and audited financial statements typically cover so a balance sheet do we need three years two years only the most recent one or the four most recent physical year well you need to know this it's something you have to memorize and this could be an easy question on the CPA exam for the balance sheet you need the most two for the income statement statement of cash flows you need the most three just you need make sure you know this. This is basically a memory question. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, MCQs. That's going to help you, whether you are studying for CPA, CMA, accounting student. Invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.